700.10a, identification of emergency systems. Identification for emergency circuits has been expanded to include cables and raceways not associated with boxes or enclosures. Now, I think many of you are well aware that we have to identify air emergency wiring. What's more, not only do we have to identify air wiring, we have to do what? We have to, when we go to, our, to section 700.10, we have to keep it separate from other wiring within the building or even in the same enclosure with some permissions for uh, luminaires and transfer enclosures and things of that nature. But we keep our emergency system wiring separate, don't we? Well, why is that so important, you ask? It's important because we don't want a failure of the normal system to take out our emergency wiring as well. So we want to protect it and keep it separate, isolated from the uh, normal building wiring because that's going to be called upon in an emergency. When the lights are out, those circuits have to remain operable. Uh, identification for emergency circuits, again, has been expanded. We are now marking cables and raceways not associated with boxes or enclosures. So when we have long runs of cable that are going through the building, we're going to mark these cables at intervals not to exceed 25 feet where boxes in, or enclosures are not encountered. Now, many of us are used to the rule when we have a box in a ceiling and we see it's for the emergency system. And what color is it usually? Well, it's usually red. Code doesn't specify that it has to be red in color. It just has to be distinguished. Uh, I highly uh, recommend using red because that's what most people are trained to see. But it has to be a distinguishable color. Now, do you have to purchase red junction box covers? No, you can simply make these in the field. Uh, we have marked air support wires for ceiling systems for many years uh, to, to note they were ones for holding cables or raceways and are not installed for ceiling support. How did we do that? We threw a handful on the ground and went over them with a can of spray paint. Same process could work here. Uh, marking these are very important to identify that so someone doesn't come along the way and perhaps uh, say, oh, we have a little extra flexibility in this raceway. It's a uh, 20 amp here. Let's, uh, let's pull a receptacle off of here or another luminaire. You know? That red mark will say, stay away. It's an emergency system. Now, the uh, exception to this rule, of course, is if we're just daisy chaining from box to box to box, sometimes four, six, eight feet apart, you're not, it's not necessary to mark those in that case because the boxes are clearly marked and you can clearly see the raceway or cable entering the box and traveling to the next box that is marked as an emergency system. Again, it could be as simple as spray painting the cable or raceway. Doesn't have to be elaborate. And the code tells us a distinctive color or marking, okay? Emergency system receptacles now require identification with a distinctive color or marking on the receptacle cover plates or the receptacle. Same type of deal uh, here. Now remember when we're talking about emergency receptacles and so forth, 700 systems, those are ones that are required. I told inspectors many times when people would question whether this is truly an emergency system receptacle or not, and my answer would be, is it a code violation for it not to be on the emergency system? If it is a code violation for it not to be on the emergency system, then it's emergency, 
people oftentimes will try to use receptacles that are actually optional. Now, I know in many businesses, that receptacle by the cash register going out the door, the owner may think that is the most important receptacle in the building, but it doesn't typically fall under a 700 emergency receptacle. That would be an optional receptacle and may not be on with the emergency wiring. So it's an important distinction when we're talking about throwing this term emergency around as we do. And here's some examples of how we've taken some of these circuits and we've identified them clearly. Look at this piece of, whoops, excuse me, this piece of MC cable right here. And I'm presuming that's MC because I see an insulated equipment grounding conductor. Could be AC, but we'll say MC. And we have marked it at 25 foot increments. It's that simple. Now, when somebody sees that distinctive color, red in most cases, there's an emergency circuit. Here, emergency circuits noted on a raceway. And again, more marking, identifying your emergency circuits. Emergency panel one, circuit breaker 24. So we know exactly where to address any issues we have with that, uh, with that piece of equipment.